Hi everyone. <clears throat> Today I wanted to talk about some books I've been reading uh, lately, one I've just finished and a couple I've just started. But first of all, I wanted to talk about a film magazine that I recently got. And this is called Noir City. And this is published by filmnoirfoundation.org. Eddie Miller's uh, foundation, he's the editor of this magazine. This is issue 32, the most recent one. <clears throat> But it's only the second one that's been issued as a magazine. The other 30 are available through their website. I believe they're like six bucks uh, uh, an issue. But I wanted to have a magazine on hand. This is the second one that they've, starting with issue uh, 30, they've started uh, doing print versions. And I just wanted to have a magazine on hand. I was hoping that the pictures, uh, the still photos, poster art um, would, uh, because uh, this was $15 on, uh, you can purchase this through Amazon, $15 an issue, but I really liked it. And I'm definitely going to be picking up issue uh, 30 very soon. Uh, as you can see on the cover is Gloria Graham. <clears throat> and she is the, the centerpiece article and a really nice uh, uh, text by uh, Dana, Dana Delaney. Uh, and it's, it's, it's pretty comprehensive. It discusses all her uh, major films, some of the minor ones as well, and it's uh, and on the back cover we get some a poster art from the Big Heat, Gloria Graham, Glenn Ford. This is a uh, French poster for the Big Heat, and the and the book and the magazine is just loaded for, uh, with uh, pictures from uh, you know cover to cover, great uh, great pictures. Um, you see, in a lonely place, one of the uh, um, uh, best performances, most famous performance here is a picture of her with uh, Nicholas Ray. Their marriage was crumbling <laughs> during the filming of it, but uh, they were on the set. They were uh, terrific partners in getting a, getting a, a ter tremendous performance out of um, out of Gloria Graham. And it covers, uh, like I say, it covers most of her career that pretty much ends in the late 50s, 1959, her film career. But she did appear on stage and she did a lot of television. And um, there's lots of other great stuff in here. There's a, um, I devoured this. This <laughs> I was up early this morning, I devoured this. And point, point blank, the Lee Marvin. Um, there's a nice article on that, Force of Evil, one of my all-time favorite film noirs. Here we get a picture from John Garfield from Force of Evil. I never leave the pictures up long enough for anybody to get a good look at them. Some poster art from the, and the original book that Force of Evil was uh, taken from, adopted from. We get um, book reviews, uh, some recent uh, film noir um, uh, film noir uh, uh, physical releases. There's also an article here that Eddie Muller, who is the editor of, of the magazine, and it's called The Leper with the Most fin Fingers, The Art of Ailey, Ellie Ledger Germain. And this is an artist, very, very unusual artist in that, it, in that he is institutionalized and schizophrenic, but he has moments of artistic uh, uh, frenzy and and here is um, here is a drawing that he did of of Gloria Graham and he did quite a few other film stars uh, drawings of and that's Audrey Hepburn and we have Mitchum Richard Woodmark love to have that that drawing of Vertigo so the so it it really made uh, met my uh, my uh, 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 expectations as far as having a uh, of having a, uh, a really good, combining terrific text, very interesting articles, very well well written, well researched articles, along with uh, some great artwork. So, very much recommend Noir City. You can get it through Amazon, and also go to FilmNoirFoundation.org. Uh, you can get the first 30, and I think it's in PDF form, I think they're $6 a copy, and for $20 a year, you get, I think they do three a year, three issues of 
noir city a year. If there's any film magazines, movie magazines of any kind that you guys can recommend that are still being published, please leave it. Uh, leave that info in the in the comments. I had a I once had a huge uh, movie collect movie magazine collection, sight and sound, film comment. Uh, all kinds of classic stuff from the 50s and 60s, cinema, uh, movie. Um, I, I actually had a couple of uh, uh, issues of Cahir de Cinema that was translated into English. Let's get to the books just briefly. I just finished this great biography of Truffaut by Antoine de Beck. Um, I had read Romer and I saw he did uh, his biography of Eric Romer. And I mentioned this... Uh, uh, and I love the Eric Romer biography so much, I, I, my library system had this as well, so I, I zoomed through this. I mentioned the, the, this uh, biography in a um, video I did on, um, on Mississippi Mermaid, uh, directed by Truffaut, <clears throat> and uh, I just, I, I went through it in less than a week, and this is a pretty substantial biography, and Truffaut was, I love the, um, the history of the French New Wave. I love that 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 kind of uh, just uh, uh, creative period. Most of the French New Wave directors were critics. They loved it was cinephilia to the max. Uh, movies really meant something to the culture at large. Truffaut was probably the least likely to uh, become a, a uh, world class director and probably the most commercially successful director of the French New Wave globally. Um, as he was a juvenile delinquent, uh, uh, he, uh, he was very unhappy at home. If you've seen The 400 Blows, his classic film, that is, <laughs> that's based on Truffaut's boyhood. The his depiction of his parents in the movie estranged him from them for, for years to come uh, and his extended family because of the harsh portrait he gives of his mother and father, uh, but which according to the biographer, is, is absolutely uh, spot-on accurate, as, as Truffaut did as well. And uh, he had just a fantastic life. He, he left this way too soon. He was only in his early 50s with a brain tumor. Uh, and, you know, he, he maintained friendships with many, not uh, friendships with many of the New Wave uh, uh, directors, not with Jean-Luc Godard. They, I don't think they ever um, reconciled, um, but with Eric Romer, for instance, and uh, de Beck has written a history of the French New Wave, unfortunately not translated into English. He also wrote a um, uh, biography of both Jean-Luc Godard and Jean-Pierre Melville, and neither of those have been translated into English, but I can guarantee you, if I'm still around and they, they translate that, uh, any of those books, uh, I'll, I'll be getting those uh, day one. <laughs> Okay, a couple of other books that are kind of tie-ins to recent uh, Criterion releases. And this is a book on Neil Jordan. And that is Neil Jordan on the cover. It's written by Paul McGurk from Modernism to Postmodernism. And uh, Neil Jordan uh, had a movie upgraded to uh, Blu-ray on the Criterion Collection, I guess, last week or so. I've yet to to see it. I wanted to read a little bit more about Neil Jordan, um, as I've never really paid much of attention to whether he's really a, 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 a great director or not. But he, he, but what I what I found out in the in the biography, I've only read a, read about the first fifty pages of it, was that he's he's also a novelist. He wrote seven novels and a, a, a collection of short stories. And I was a little bit hesitant to get this uh, because it didn't look like it was from a major publishing house, maybe self-published. And then when I got it, I noticed it didn't have an in index, which is almost a sure sign of self-publishing. But I was um, I was pleasantly surprised. It's a little bit academic, but uh, very readable, and I've really enjoyed it so far. And I'm I'm, I'm guessing it's going to help appreciate my my appreciation when I get around to seeing uh, uh, Mona Lisa. And then the other one, also a tie-in to, uh, to a Criterion uh, uh, recent release, and this is director in action, Johnny Toe, and the Hong Kong action film. 
This is a subject matter I, I know hardly anything about. I have seen a couple of John Woo's uh, uh, action films. That's about it. And uh, I've also read about the first 50 pages of this, and this is really, this is really a, a terrific overview of uh, Johnny Toe's films, but also Hong Kong uh, action, as the title says, and um, also covers a little bit of Sue Hark, who is Once Upon a Time in China. Um, box set is coming out, I think, in November. I think it comes out if, if we have a November, presumably will have a Barnes & Noble sale in November. Um, uh, and there's also a, um, uh, he's covered, Sue Hark is covered in this uh, book on Johnny Toe, but it's a broad view also of Hong Kong action cinema. And there's also a book I'm, I'm planning on getting, a book that covers Sue Hark and his career. And this is a tie-in with the recent Criterion release Throwdown. Uh, which, uh, according to the book, Johnny Toe uh, considers his, his best, his favorite film, and he thinks it's also his, his best film. Okay, so how about wrap this one up? I just wanted to express some enthusiasm, especially I think a lot of you guys who like film noir really should pick up this, uh, or look into picking up this uh, terrific uh, um, magazine that Eddie Muller is, is, uh, is publishing. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen to me this far. I really do appreciate it. Again, comments are welcome. Take care.